What is going on with Uber Eats base pay? Some drivers are seeing base pay like this. Meanwhile, other drivers are seeing base pay like that. It used to be fairly cut and dry to look at an offer screen and have a rough idea of what that breakdown was going to look like. In this video, we're going to talk about why your base pay may be $10 on one order and $1 on the next. What's going on everybody? I'm Zach Drives Fast for the Rideshare Guy. And in this video, we're going to talk about my money, your money, and the games that Uber Eats is playing with it. One of the things that I like so much about Uber Eats is that they put almost no emphasis on acceptance rate. Sure, they'll show you your acceptance rate, but they won't limit you if that number falls below a certain point. What they will do though, is mess with our base pay. I need to go on a tirade for a moment and revisit a video that I didn't really enjoy making. This was one of my first videos for the rideshare guy. And while I did enjoy the creative process, I didn't particularly enjoy reading through a legal agreement Googling a bunch of big words and trying to make sense of it all. Having said all that, what was discussed in that video is really only starting to manifest itself now. Uber's new terms of service have brought about significant changes in the way drivers are paid. This has resulted in some drivers seeing orders paying less than $1 in base pay. Meanwhile, other drivers are seeing upwards of $10 or more. Previously, determining what your base pay was was relatively simple. It was a flat rate plus mileage. However, the recent lack of pay transparency has made it difficult for drivers to understand their earnings. In my previous video on the subject, I talked about some discrepancies that I found on two orders that I personally received on the same day. Both orders were picked up at the same restaurant on the same day and were delivered to the same neighborhood. And to avoid any confusion, I was in the exact same parking spot when I accepted both of them. Surprisingly, the order that went further and took longer paid me 93 cents less than the other order. This inconsistency raised concerns about how Uber calculates base pay. Let's say that you date somebody who gets hangry. You get home after working all day and walk to the front door trepidatiously, having no idea what to expect, praying that you're not about to walk into a scene from The Exorcist. I'm a person who doesn't like to guess, and I am very much a person who doesn't like to guess when it comes to my money. Can you imagine what would happen if Uber shareholders got together and decided to pay Dara in the way that they pay drivers? He might make $50 million this year, but next year he might only make $1 million. And out of that $1 million, he might get wage baited. Now wouldn't that be poetic justice? I want to give you two recent examples of Uber messing with driver's pay. And when I say recent, I mean recent. A couple months back, Uber sent out notifications to a ton of drivers that they had been overpaid for orders that they had already delivered. In my opinion, they had two options. They could either make drivers happy by acknowledging their mistake and doing the right thing, which would have been nothing, or the route that they took. They opted to take the low road and take the money back out of the driver's accounts. Shitty? Sure, but it gets worse. Before we get into my next example, I want to be crystal clear. It wasn't just Uber that played this game. It was all of the gig apps. Within the last month, drivers in California saw a back payment on Prop 22 money that they were owed. If you're thinking it's great that Uber paid it, you're right. But... Let me tell you how that money ended back up in the pockets of the drivers, where it rightfully belonged, because it wasn't out of the goodness of the gig company's hearts. You don't have Uber or any other company to thank for that money. You can thank Sergio from the Rideshare Guy and a gentleman named Pablo Gomez. Pablo found a discrepancy in his Prop 22 payment and brought it to Sergio's attention. Sergio, having the reach he has, used his voice to cost the gig companies hundreds of millions of dollars. Of course, it wasn't their money to start with. See, customers pay that money, and it's supposed to go directly to the driver, and that rate is set by the individual cities. See, the problem is, customers were being charged the correct amount, but drivers sure weren't being paid the correct amount. The gig companies were borrowing the difference. If it weren't for these two men, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, Instacart, Shipt, and Spark would have been sitting on hundreds of millions of dollars that didn't belong to them. What do you think would happen if I walked into a bank wearing a ski mask and all black and asked to borrow a few hundred million dollars? It probably wouldn't go over too well, but I'm also not a major corporation, so laws apply to me. With running my own channel, as well as being a contributor for the rideshare guy, I keep my ear to the ground for anything gig related, and I can't recall a single company coming forward and saying, hey, this money's being underpaid to drivers. Okay, now that we've looked at a couple of examples, What's my point? Uber has demonstrated that they are willing to play fast and loose with our money. What happens when we add a complicated pay structure on top of it? I'd argue that we no longer know if we're being paid correctly 
or if we're getting shafted. If you were working a W-2 job, your boss would never come up to you and say, hey, great work. I'm going to pay you four bucks less an hour because reasons. Same thing with a general contractor. If one of their clients underpaid them, they'd end up in court. On top of that, a general contractor would never accept work guessing how much they're going to get paid. I think that we can all agree that almost none of the gig apps are transparent, but unfortunately, Uber takes it one step further with hidden tips. Until Uber started messing with base pay, in my market, the minimum was $3, and that's assuming that the customer was cheap and didn't tip. However, any tip exceeding $8 would be capped and hidden from the driver, making $11 the magic number in my market. Anything that showed $11 or more on the offer screen had an excellent chance of having a hidden tip. I've said this all along, and I will continue to say it. I don't think you should accept offers because there might be a hidden tip. Having said all that, I have been put in positions before where I've had to choose between unassigning an order due to an unreasonable wait time or sticking it out and hoping the order comes up quickly. A few things would factor in my decision to unassign the order. Number one, was it a restaurant known for big tips? Number two, did the payout show at least $11? If so, it could have a hidden tip. And finally, how many items were in the order? And while this wasn't foolproof, these three things combined would always factor into my decision making when determining if I was going to keep an order or unassign it. But how do you predict a hidden tip when you have no idea what your base pay is going to be on that order? You don't. You can't. It's just another gig app guessing game. I want to revisit part of the video I made six months ago and talk about how Uber is actually paying drivers. I explained that in Uber's revised terms of service, they state that base pay is no longer a flat fee plus mileage. Instead, they're now calculating our base pay based on distance, time, and expected time at the restaurant. And all that is fine and well if the base pay is adjusted after the delivery in our favor when that order takes a hell of a lot longer than expected, but of course, that never happens. After all, what they think should be a 5-minute wait realistically could be a 30-minute wait on a busy weekend night. Sure, don't get me wrong, I've seen a few examples of crazy high base pay, but more recently I've seen far more examples of base pay that's below $1. So, while Uber is trying to pass this off as a fairer base pay model for the drivers, to me, it sure seems like they're coming out ahead a hell of a lot more often than we are. I want to jump back to one of those rare cases where base pay is higher than it was before. Well, that is great when it happens, I have a concern about that as well. It's pretty common knowledge within the driving community that customers who tip poorly, or even worse, not at all, are frequently the customers who claim that their order never arrived when it in fact did. Not taking low or no tip orders is part of how I protect my account from wrongful deactivations. With base pay fluctuating all over the place, we really don't know if it's a no tip order anymore. Just something to think about. And I can't speak for you, but I think it's unacceptable that markets are already oversaturated, that many of us are spending five bucks a gallon at the gas station, again, that we're covering 100% of our own expenses, yet Uber is sending out doubles for $2.06. In the video I made six months ago, I broke down a section of the new terms of service that explained that regardless of how many orders you deliver, one fare will be inclusive of all deliveries. Or in plain English, anything past the first order, and we're working for tips only. As I talked about in my previous video, I started seeing orders coming through that were paying the new base model, at least seemingly, prior to the new agreement being sent out. Being is that I saw it multiple times, I'm pretty confident I'm right. If Sergio and Pablo taught me anything, it's that David can defeat Goliath. If you see an inaccuracy in your pay, document it and reach out to me. I wish that this were a video about understanding your base pay, but unfortunately, Seems like Uber is the one with the key to that knowledge, and they're not sharing. Again, we the drivers are left guessing. If you haven't done so yet, please do consider pressing the like button and subscribing to the Rideshare Guy. You can catch my videos here every Tuesday. Throughout this video, I've been referencing an older video that I made. You should check that out by clicking here. I'm Zach Drives Fast for the Rideshare Guy. Take care.